When I first heard the topic I was asked to address, I thought, what more do the participants of this conference need to know about the importance of the Eucharist? After all, we began this evening with mass instead of a prayer or a liturgy of the word service that often takes longer than the celebration of the sacred mysteries. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't get it, you've been, not been in the Catholic school system is too long. <laughs> Teaching from the source and summit of our faith, how the Eucharist forms and feeds the ministry of teaching. Our entire Catholic faith, including the essential ministries of education, social services, and health care, all flow from word and sacrament and are a means to assist in the purpose of the church, which is the salvation of souls. With that said, as a bishop and as a priest, um, I've had conversations with lay people, faithful religious, and certainly priests, particularly pastors with parish schools, and all have asked the question, why won't the Eucharist be the foundation of one's life? Especially if one's been given a share in helping guide young people to know Jesus Christ in a Catholic school, as a teacher, as administrator. In other words, why do we have people teaching in our schools if they don't go to mass on Sundays? I like to structure my reflection to you in three areas, the context, the classroom, and the commission. Now, Mary Pat knows me. I, maybe from my days of teaching, I am notorious for doing uh, sidebars uh, because they say a good teacher is a good storyteller. So lest you get confused if you're more the engineering type who likes methodical progress, I will go off track occasionally, but preface it with sidebar. First, the context. As Mary Pat said, I taught in an archdiocesan high school, unionized, for 19 of the 24 years of my priesthood, prior to being named an auxiliary bishop. It was a diocesan high school that had lost its way, as many schools had and have. Some have had to do with the clergy that had been assigned there, some of it had to do with the religious community that had been there at one time. When I became president, I went through one principal who was the acting principal, another principal we hired that I let go at the semester. And then I brought in a very good man and peace and prosperity reigned at Marin Catholic. But he had a book and some of you may have read it I'm not one of those books that you pick up and then you quote from it for the next six months, the flavor of the month. But this book really had a very practical advice. Some of you may have read it, it was Jim Collins' The Good to Great. And you know the thing, a good leader starts by getting the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus, and the right people in the right seats. He goes on to say, the leaders stick with that discipline, first the people, then the direction, no matter how dire the circumstances. Now that was in 2005, and I had been assigned to that high school in 1992. What did we find in 1992? Again, this is the context of many of our schools. An ex-religious reading tarot cards in religion class, angry ex-religious or seminarians in the classroom, those who were well-intentioned but misdirected, and others who were angry for reasons I could never find out, but all would take a paycheck that had the archbishop's signature on it. And those who were troublemakers were present like termites in a foundation. Now, six months into my first year, the priest who had been assigned as president the year before said at breakfast, we are going to have to pray these people out. And we began a monthly holy hour on a Sunday night with Eucharistic adoration, the rosary, and a reflection of the gospel for that day. Now it was a mustard seed. The average amount of people would come would be about 10 or 12, sometimes as many as 20, but consistently over that period of time, there were about 10 faithful. And there were many blessings that followed, giving the school into God's hands. The first was a couple of months later after we began the holy hour, when on Holy Thursday, the religion chair resigned and left for another so-called Catholic high school where I would say heresy was business as usual. 
But a few years later, and this is the context, we were interviewing for the position of a teacher in the Religious Studies Department, sidebar. When Archbishop Niederauer came to our high school and he, I was the only diocesan priest as a president, he said, why do you call your theology department the Religious Studies Department? Theology is a science and you're studying about God. You're not studying religion for religion's sake. Now, some of the other schools had these big grandiose reasons why it had to be religious studies. Just with the stroke of a fountain pen, we changed it to the theology department. We were there to help save souls. Back to the interview. So in the room was the president of the school, a priest, the principal, the vice principal of academics, the chair of the department, me as chaplain and teacher. The candidate we were interviewing had been living in the Bay Area for over six months. And there were the usual round of questions asked. Classes he had previously taught, extracurricular activities he could moderate, the grade levels he felt most comfortable instructing. Right before the mass, and I had not asked any questions, I asked him, what's your parish? The long pause, he looked around and thought, well, maybe I can help him. Where do you go to mass on Sundays? Again, a long pause. Well, I consider my parish St. Polycarp in St. Louis. Monsignor Weitengruber is the pastor. And he went on and on about that. When we get up, got up and principal closed the door, I said, how can we hire someone to teach religion in a Catholic school who claims to be a practicing Catholic and he can't even name one church in the city of San Francisco? If he had said St. Mary's Cathedral, we would have hired him. But here it was, where was the Eucharist in this man's life? Now, to all of you, I don't know if you've had this experience. Some of you are in schools that might be moving more into what we've been talking about and we'll talk about these days, but some of you also have been involved in Catholic education enough to know that we are given this privilege, obligation, and responsibility to lead people to Jesus Christ, to help families, and most especially, spiritually innocent and impressionable children that our Lord has given a grace to, that they would grow in grace and wisdom. How can one not see the importance of participating in the holy sacrifice of the mass? Again, I suspect and I hope that many of you are in schools that have been more intentional and that you're staffed with believers, active practicing Catholics, who try to live their faith each day with questions, with struggles, because it's so often important for us that we approach those staff and most especially students with the patience and the compassion of Jesus Christ. Remember how often he was frustrated with the apostles when they struggled to believe and to accept. So the concept text and the challenge are still very present. It is difficult to create a learning environment that is truly rooted in Christ. And Marin Catholic is doing very well. It is the right people on the bus. And I'm told a few of the leftover wrong people have gotten off the bus and that the right people in the right seats. As a young priest on the faculty as chaplain, the administration solid. There are the sisters that had the roots in the Nashville, the Ann Arbor Dominicans there. And again, it is a place of vocations. That was the context in many of our schools. Now the classroom. As you know, our country has just begun what's called a Eucharistic revival. And it's leading up to the national event, which is a Eucharistic Congress in July of 24 in Indianapolis. For those who are participating and helping, there will be a great emphasis on the work that Catholic schools can do and how they might help the next generation and the past generation, that is parents, to appreciate, to know and to love Jesus Christ and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Eucharist. Thomas Aquinas speaks of the Eucharist as spiritual food, nourishment. Now for the 19 years that I taught 
in my working with the pastors of my own diocese of Spokane and my close work with Katie Rickers, the director of Catholic schools, I know that teaching is tough for any number of reasons. What students are going through, age appropriate in our culture, well-intentioned parents who want something more for their children, but they don't quite know what to give. Parents themselves who may have been po poorly formed, who may have spent 16 years in Catholic schools, but again, not sure what the faith means. And then there are the students who have learning difficulties, learning challenges, diverse needs, and all the isms that are out there. And finally, teachers themselves, who have their own struggles, who are trying to find their way in a relationship with Jesus Christ as they grow in awareness of the responsibility to play a role in answering the words of Jesus, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. Christ the teacher comes to us in the Eucharist in the most intimate way. And love and appreciation the Eucharist demands from us a humility that we are recipients of a great gift, the bread of angels, that we in no way merit. When I prepare a homily or a talk, I always begin with a simple prayer. Lord, what do we need to say and what do they need to hear? Again, in writing a homily, the same prayer. I think of you as teachers or those of you guiding teachers as administrators, whether it's lesson planning, grading, or meeting with parents, that simple prayer might be helpful to you. Lord, what do we need to say and what do they need to hear? And when we see the Eucharist as spiritual food, it calls us not only to regular participation in the Mass, but also in Eucharistic adoration and regular confession. For they are all strengths for the journey. And if the Eucharist is, a, is that of a sacrament of love, it produces love. We know you cannot give what you do not have. What will help you persevere is the Eucharist. We should all think to ourselves that Jesus is saying to each of us as individuals, persevere in your mission to bring me to the young as I persevered in my mission to redeem their souls. Each of us in Catholic education is given a mission we're sharing in Jesus's mission. I often speak to the seminarians and priests of the diocese about three essential elements, characteristics that should be present in all of our lives. And I would say it should be in all involved in Catholic education. Humility, gratitude, and generosity. Humble people experience what St. Paul wrote, why should we boast all we have we received? Now, for those of you who pride yourself in going to schools taught by a certain religious order, where humility takes place more in this context, we take great pride in our humility. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> the humility I'm talking about comes from the French school of spirituality evidenced in the writings of the great St. Vincent de Paul, or St. Francis de Sales, or St. John Baptist de La Salle, a bit younger, the patron saint of teachers, the founders of the De La Salle Christian Brothers. St. Vincent de Paul often spoke about humility as truth. Since the devil does not know humility, he doesn't know how to deal with it. And of course, the greatest act of humility is God becoming man, the incarnation. Well, for those of you less theological, maybe the words of my uncle Phil about my brother Pat. <laughs> I like to buy you for what you're worth and sell you for what you think you're worth. <laughs> so. None of us deserves such a gift as Jesus in the Eucharist or even as mercy. You see, mercy is undeserved forgiveness. It's like an inheritance. All inheritance is pure gift. 
So a, humility is essential to the Catholic educator. We can be excellent without being elite. And we should not foster in our schools a sense that my family and my kid is better because we got into this school that denied your kid entrance. When one is humble, one is grateful. How can I repay the Lord for all the goodness he has shown me? That's the base of my chalice that belonged to my home pastor, my pastor of my home parish, St. Brennan's, Monsignor Walsh. It's from the 116th Psalm. See, humble and grateful people are generous. And they realize that what they have cannot be kept to oneself. It must be shared. So an effective teacher who wants to reach the hearts of young people can do so only and most effectively when they are humble, grateful, and generous. As we know, Eucharist means thanksgiving, and it strengthens these qualities. Have you ever seen those bumper stickers, my child is an honor student? It's all the more obnoxious when they're on Subarus. <laughs> now from the Northwest, all the bishops in the Northwest drive Subarus, except I drive a Buick Enclave. Remember, Subaru has the ad, God is love, I mean, not Subaru is love. No, God is love. Now, Father Nick's back there knows how often I denounce Subaru in the pulpit in, <laughs> at Our Lady of Lords Cathedral in Spokane. Education and intelligence with humility leads to wisdom. Without humility, it leads to arrogance. And there's no place of arrogance in the church. Likewise, individuals who may know all the arguments for God, but actually don't know him. Why? They lack humility. We could have a solid school, and the kids can dutifully repeat through academic rigor what we hope to learn. But without humility, they will not be wise. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. I often pray the fourth Eucharistic prayer. Now, most of the time, it's not heard because you can't separate the preface from the body of Eucharistic prayer four. They're joined together. It's the only of the Eucharistic prayers that must have this one preface. I use it because it has phrases that are important, I believe, to those who teach the young, those who are entrusted to help in the salvation of the young. It's very important for the priests who are pastors of parishes with schools, who work with principals, for parent communities, to reflect on the fourth Eucharistic prayer. And maybe the next time you go to Mass in the Missalette, you can read the words. But it has two phrases that are very important. All who seek you with a sincere heart and all those whose faith is known to you alone. The pursuit of knowledge is the pursuit of Christ. All who seek you with a sincere heart and all those whose faith is known to you alone. Catholic schools must nourish the souls and intellects of students with the bountiful banquet of humanities and the sciences, rich history, compelling story, the inspiration of art and music to cultivate a thirst for knowledge. I do believe there's a need for sports in the high school and in the grade school to have a balanced individual. As I said at the mass earlier, we don't want solid Catholic education to be about weird kids. <laughs> the poet T.S. Eliot said, where is the wisdom we've lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we've lost in information? Modern education is a deluge of information and skill, largely fragmented, and sadly, often woke. 
with more that is opinion than truth. And remember, opinion is the lowest form of knowledge. Education aims at fulfilling human dignity by developing what is most human in our students. The aptitude to see, to notice, to attend, to wonder, and to contemplate. These are of the mind, but they're also of the soul as they equip the soul for the ultimate end, eternal life. And therein lies the connection between education and worship. Worship is the highest form of knowledge, and again, opinion is the lowest form. It is the Catholic school teacher who guides the students to this understanding, who helps them always seek the Lord with a sincere heart. Thus, it is essential that the teacher or the administrator know and understand deeply. And that requires, again, humility, gratitude, and generosity. Otherwise, T.S. Eliot said it best, we had the experience but missed the meaning. A Eucharistic vision sees the world as natural and supernatural, full of wonder and mystery. Sacraments are, as we know, signs of the sacred, and all of creation is imbued with this, but we must train our eyes to see it. One of the essential marks of a Catholic school as we saw on the earlier presentation by, uh, before this began, before dinner, had the little booklet by Archbishop Miller of Vancouver, who at one time was Secretary of the Congregation for Catholic Education. And he basically says, as we see one of those main aspects of Catholic schools, that Catholic school is to be founded on a Christian anthropology. But the human person is made in the image of God, made in and for love, sexually differentiated with an eternal destiny and a lens through which we understand our students. However, difficult or challenging it may be and those students may be. Finally, do we humbly accept our own limitations, the speck in our eyes? Finally, the commission. St. Augustine in his Easter morning sermon, addressing those who have been baptized the night before, asked them to consider how the bread that will become the body of Christ is made, and how they, the newly baptized, went through a similar process. He states that as grain is ground into flour, they were ground down through their Lenten fasting. As water is poured over the flour to form a dough, the water of baptism was poured over them. And as the dough is baked into a loaf, they are fired with the Holy Spirit being formed into the body of Christ. At the end of Mass, the priest or deacon can say essentially these words, go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. We are told to go forth to proclaim our faith in God, the Father, to a broken world, to go forth to share our hope in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, even with the doubting world, to go forth with the grace of the Holy Spirit, to offer charity and compassion to a dejected world. This is the commission. In fact, it is our mission, and it is a mission of the church, especially those of us entrusted to help guide young people to grow in grace and wisdom. And that's why when we hear this commission, this mission to go forth, with one voice we say at the end of Mass, thanks be to God, for it is with great gratitude to God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that we are to go forth to do God's will in the world. And we, who have shared in the Eucharistic sacrifice, now are called to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice for the sake of others, especially the young. The Eucharist is the sacrament of love and a sign of unity and a bond of charity that's taught to us in the Second Vatican Council. At a time of great division and confusion, it would be good for us who are guiding the young to recall the words of St. John Chrysostom in the fourth century in a sermon he gave to the faithful in Antioch, as he warned those who had received the Eucharist yet failed to love their neighbor. St. John said, you've tasted the blood of the Lord, yet you do not recognize your brother. You dishonor this table when you do not judge worthy of sharing your food with someone already judged worthy to take part in this meal. 
God freed you from all your sins and invited you here, but you've not become merciful. Pope Emeritus Benedict echoed this warning when he said, a Eucharist which does not pass over into the concrete practice of love is intrinsically fragmented. The Eucharist is the source and summit because it contains the fullness of the church's treasure. Jesus Christ himself in the humble appearance of bread and wine to nourish, form, inspire, and ultimately lead us home. With that, I'd like to conclude with the prayer of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, the patroness of the Catholic schools in the United States, a prayer that she would say at the end of mass after she had received communion. O divine savior, let our faith be an acceptable offering while we adore you in your real presence, though yet unseen. Let us delight to call you with St. Thomas, my Lord and my God. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen.